live from Mississippi's Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. This is the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. Thanks for joining us on a beautiful Friday afternoon for the Class 2A State Championship featuring the Bassfield Yellow Jackets taking on the Upor Eagles. I am Travis Raychek, joined alongside by Jesse Mitchell in the booth today. And Jesse, we got a great game, I believe, for four quarters. And and uh, I think it's going to come down to the team that can, you know, control the football and, and make the least amount of mistakes and, um, you know, give, give yourself an opportunity to win in the fourth quarter. Obviously, Bassfield has done everything it takes to win in their 15 ball games up to this point. But what is that one thing today that may make the difference? They must establish the running game and control the time of possession. If they do that, they have a great chance of winning this game. And that speed, too, that Bassfield speed is pretty legendary down there. On the other side, 14-1, and Eupora comes in out of the north half of the bracket. And the Eagles, they're really led by one guy. He gets all the publicity, and deservedly so. Absolutely. Derek Jones, over 1,000 yards receiving, committed to Ole Miss. He's a guy that the coaches are looking for. Get him out in space, get him the ball, and let him do what he does best. And Coach Graham knows exactly what Jones brings to his team, but he's going to need all the other guys to help out for the Eagles to get their first ever state championship. On, on the offensive side of the ball, we've got to find a way to move the chains through the run game, use a little play action, uh, keep the clock running. That's been our philosophy for most of the year. On the defensive side of the ball, we need to try to force some turnovers, avoid the big play. And that's been our blueprint for the, for the majority of the year, and, and we're going to come down to Jackson with that same blueprint. Coach Graham said it right there. you got to try and find a way to slow down this Bassfield offense. Very few people have, but what is the most important thing for you, poor today? Again, they must keep Jerome Keys off the field and under control. If they can do that, they have a great opportunity to establish what they want to do and walk away with the championship. We want to introduce the third member of our team today, and uh, Kim Tanner down on the field for this telecast. Yeah, just, just another beautiful day here at Memorial Stadium. Absolutely incredible weather for two incredible teams to be here today. As you've mentioned, it's going to be a great game, evenly matched. And I had a chance to talk to some of the students about what they did this week to get ready for this big game. Lots of pep rallies, lots of community support, as you would imagine. But I asked what was going to make the difference in that one difference in terms of wins and losses this year. Eupora claims it's pride, tradition, and excellence. That's what's going to even the play. Playing field today for them. But for now, I have a great seat, so I'll give it back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Kim. It should be a great afternoon of football in store for us when we come back. Bassfield versus Eupora for the 2A championship at the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. 2012 Gridiron Classic is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Now more than ever, it's good to be blue. Bank Plus. It's more than a name. It's a promise. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. And energy for the Mississippi High School Football Championships brought to you by Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon. Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. For whom does the cowbell ring? For our students, winning national competitions. For our faculty, providing outstanding learning experiences. For our research, improving our future with each new discovery. For our outreach and service, touching lives every day. For whom does the cowbell ring? It rings for all of us at Mississippi State University. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. of the MHSAA football tournament on MPB is made possible in part by Chimneyville Smokehouse. Smoking Mississippi since 1989. Applebee's. Applebee's proudly supports Mississippi high school football. The Soul Shine Pizza Factory. Feel the love. And Mama Hamels serving up scrumptious southern comfort food. Welcome back to the 2A championship game here, part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic 15-0. Bassfield is set to take on 14-1 Eupora. Bassfield has won the opening toss, deferred until the second half, so the Eagles will get the ball first. And, Jesse, we may get our first chance to see Derek Jones, who's back deep to receive. Alongside him is Lazaric Davis. So here we go, 15-0, Yellow Jackets looking for their first state title since 2009 versus the 14-1 Eagles looking for their first state title ever. Yellow Jackets will squib kick along the far side. Caught there and brought out past the 40-yard line, and that is where Eupora and Trey Pittman will set up. Travis, obviously, they're trying to keep the ball away from Derrick Jones by going with the squib kick. It gives you, it hurts you yardage-wise, but it keeps you away from their most dangerous player. So Yupora will send the offense out on the field. It is led by a sophomore quarterback. Trey Pittman has been very effective this year, coming in with 21 touchdown passes to only six interceptions. Of course, Jones is his big playmaker out on the outside, 20 total TDs entering the game, and they're going to operate out of that two-back eye formation most of the afternoon. There goes Jones in motion on first down, and a quick give up the middle. That's going to be Vandy Smith, the fullback, out past midfield, close to a first down. Extra formation they started out, Travis. They had uh, Derrick Jones lined up in the backfield, motioning him out, trying to see what they're doing and, and see if they're focusing on Derrick Jones, maybe use him as a decoy early. That run about half a yard short of a first down, so it'll set up second and one in Bassfield territory. This time play action as Pittman rolls right. Pass into no man's land there as he was getting rid of that one. And not a bad idea to take a shot on second and short when you feel pretty good about your chances on third down. Absolutely. You have a, a top receiver on your team that you trust who gets you third down in this sort of situation or you can run for it. It's a great play call to go on second down, second and short to try to stretch the field and get something deep. See what Coach Graham has in store on third and one. A little bit of mis miscommunication there, and Pittman is dropped for a loss of about three, and that will bring up a critical early fourth down in this game. Interesting choice now for Coach Graham. It is. You know, coming in the state championship, you get the butterflies going, and you look for some busted plays, but that was a play that really, really hurt uh, Yupora. See how they respond on this punt. Moves the ball back to midfield. That'll set up a fourth and three. And it looks like Coach Graham is going to send the punting unit out onto the field. It'll be Pittman that handles the punting duties as well. Bassfield not putting anyone back deep to receive this kick. As Pittman gets it off and angles it towards the sideline, it's going to take an eagle roll down inside the 10 and it'll be touched right there at about the eight. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company is an official partner of the Mississippi High School Activities Association. Go with the home team. 
So our first chance to get a look at that Bass Field offense coming into this game, averaging over 40 points per contest with Jamez Applewhite at the helm. That time to give into the middle of the field. Tough running by Jerome Keys. That's what you're going to see all day. Jerome Keys hitting it up the middle and getting tough yards. He's a pounder. That gained good for about eight. It was set up a second and two for Bassfield. And all afternoon you're going to see that wing T formation. A little, little bit of uh, variation they can do to it. And uh, a lot of motion that they put on in the backfield. This time... It'll be a give coming around the far side. That one will be close to the first down. Rod Williams on the carry. So you're going to see a lot of Keys, Rod Williams, and then you also have the sophomore, Trodrick Daniels, who get involved in that three-back set. When you have a wing T, you, that's a bunch of misdirection. You're going to see a lot of touches from a lot of different people. But no gain on that play for Williams, so it'll bring up third and two for Bassfield from their own 18-yard line. This time a give straight up the middle and good for the first down. It is Keys. Just a straight handoff to Keys up the middle. He presses the hole and gets the tough yards. First down. Again, that's one of the keys to the game is get Jerome Keys the ball and try to keep the uh, Upora offense off the field. Keys coming in with over 1,500 yards on the season. Picks up a big first down there, the first first down of the game. This time, they're going to try the outside. Derek Jones, though, coming up and making the stop on Daniels. It is trying to stretch the stretch the defense a little bit. They've been pounding it up the middle. Let's take it on the edge. Great defense by Upor coming up, making the big stop. Yeah, we mentioned how good Jones is on offense. He's been really good on defense, too. Leads this team in interceptions and also active in tackling. So here we have a second and seven coming up for Bassfield. This time, Keys, excuse me, Applewhite looks to throw. Has it complete out to Jeffrey Smith, close to another first down. It's going to be very close, Travis. Just a short route to the sticks. I don't know if he got it. I think he's going to be a few inches short. Great pitch and catch. Bassfield is known for their running attack, but Smith is pretty potent out there on the outside. Over 500 yards receiving, and he's definitely the go-to guy if Applewhite is going to throw the ball. And bring the chains out and measure as the ball rests just past the 35-yard line. It looks like it will be good enough for a Yellow Jacket first down. And Coach Mancuso has been known this season to alternate quarterbacks. You're probably going to see the junior Calvin Moore at times, but Applewhite's the senior. He got the start today, and uh, he was the one that led him on a big game-winning drive last week. And uh, Coach definitely has trust in both the guys. But here's Applewhite under center on a first down. The give this time will be Williams around the outside. Williams has a hole, has the sideline. Rod Williams is going to go the distance. Bass field touchdown. Great play. Great play. <laughs> They get, two guard, they get a guard and a tackle out front, and he just made some, some great moves to make some guys miss. And once he saw the opening, he just turned on the speed. Okay. Eight blockers in front. One guy, two guy missed. Now just put the pedal down. Rod Williams, 65 yards on the opening drive for Bassfield. Jones, the only one that got a hand on him there, but by the time he did, it was too late. Williams into the end zone, and just like that, Bassfield puts six on the board. We'll try and add the extra point here. And that is up and good. So quickly, the Yellow Jackets take a 7 to nothing lead here in the 2A title game over Uport, going 92 yards on that drive. I want to remind folks, 
It's just trusting what got you here. I mean, he knows he has a great running game mixed in with a few passes. He, as you said, we may see two quarterbacks, but he's going with what got him here, and, and that's what's working for him. It'll be another short kick. This one grabbed at the 30-yard line. And I believe there was a fair catch called for, so that's where you pour will take over. Folks, show your spirit by texting your school's keyword to 46786. You pour your keyword is gridiron4. Bassfield, your keyword is gridiron3. The school with the most votes at the end of the game will win a $1,000 donation from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. Standard text messaging rates apply. One vote per phone will be counted. So right at the 31 is where Yupor will set up for their second possession of the afternoon. They went three and out on their first series. See if Pittman can get him moving this time out. He'll send Jones in motion. He's going to look that way. Has Jones deep. Outstretched arms. But incomplete. I thought he had a great route. He got on top of the DB and the ball was placed well, but the defensive back was able to recover. Here it goes. Ball's in the air. Look at the separation. He has it. Defensive back recovers and rips the ball out. Really nice job there closing by Cornell Armstrong to get his hands in there and lodge, dislodge it from Jones. I tell you, Travis, if they're going to continue to play uh, Jones one-on-one, -on -one, I think you're going to see more balls going his way. Jones will go out to the far side of the field, to the right of Pittman. They will give up the middle straight handoff to Vandy Smith. Not much running room there. It's a good play by middle linebacker Alvin Moore. Alvin Moore's leading tackler for the Yellow Jackets. It's the way to step up and clog the middle. Alvin Moore is part of a loaded junior class for this Bassfield team. You hear a lot about it. The seniors are good, but these juniors are what's really special about this Bassfield team. In fact, five of them start on the defensive side. You're looking at James Graves right there. He is a monster in the middle. He's one of those seniors, though, that started in 2009 when they won a title. That pass out to Jones. He will come down with his first grab of the day. No, they say he's out of bounds. I don't think it would have made much of a difference. As you see, as he, if he would have gotten his foot in, he was still quite short of the first down. I don't know. That looks as if he was in, but the ref is right there. Caught great catch. Wow, great hit. Great pressure on the quarterback. That's what you need. You got it. You can't let him throw the ball without being hit. So big completion there down to the 39-yard line of Eupora. That handoff to Keys in the middle. Not much area for him to work with a gain of about one. Good stop by uh, Markel Ackleberger. He's the one of the leading tacklers on the uh, Eagles. It's a way to come up and plug the hole. You know, Coach Graham talked in the pregame about stopping the big plays, and we've seen two big plays, the 65-yard touchdown by Williams and then that throw by Applewhite there. This is what Bassfield does, though. They use all those weapons that they have. So second and eight. This time it's Keys once again. Keys moves the pile up for about five yards, and now you have yourself in third and short. Third down and four. It's going to be an interesting play call here. Do you go with Keys? Do you try to get somebody else on the end, or... You go with your quarterback with the passes. I think we may see the pass here on a rollout. Third down, about three to go for Bassfield here. It's going to be a give. Williams, Williams finds a hole. Williams wow. loses the oh. football, and it's recovered by Eupora for the first turnover of the game in the Eagles. Get back on offense. They will start at their own 17-yard line, down 7 to nothing, here in the first quarter. Pittman swings it out. That pass is incomplete. 
looking to hit Jones out of the backfield. They're doing a lot of interesting things with Jones, lining him up in the backfield, lining him up in the slot, lining him up out wide, just giving him different looks to try to get some sort of advantage on uh, one of these defensive players. But that was a poorly thrown ball, but the defense was there either way. Third possession of the game for Uation here for Pittman and the Eagles. Pittman will go play action. Punt is blocked. Ball still Touchdown. loose. Picked up. Touchdown. Bassfield. What can I say? Great call. Great pressures. Poorly blocked. Bassfield had the, the, the block on the whole time, and it was right there. Took it right off the corner's foot. Wow. Simon Johnson gets it with the left hand. The ball scores. Great. You know. That's what Bassville is known for. That's what they're going to do. Keys up the middle, keys up the middle to get you focused on the middle and try to hit you and stretch you on the end. Third to about four for Bassfield. This time it's keys up the middle again, but a good stop there as Smith came up and made the play. So now Butch Mancuso faced with a decision. Great, great defensive play. That's the way to stay there by number seven and number Chin, another score. Applewhite will give to Williams. Williams has nothing but daylight into the end zone, but there was a flag in the backfield. You got Holden in the backfield. Great, great design play. You even have guys in the backfield, but in order to make that play successful and happen, somebody had to grab the clock. Right there. Uh, and it's Mancuso going to get his guys over to the sideline and figure out what they want to do here on this second and long. The problem is they're not a bunch of plays in the playbook to get second and 20. They haven't had to throw the ball too much, but two times Applewhite has found men wide open. That third time he had Michael across the middle just couldn't quite complete it. There's been open receivers, so they don't do it a lot, but they're fairly effective when they do. This is a huge defensive stop for Dupont. If they can get a stop here, I think the coach can build on this going into the second this second quarter and tell his team, look, this is our opportunity. We're only down by two scores. We have some big play guys on offense. Give us this stop here and watch. We can make something happen going the other way. And you always have to worry about the mentality of your team going into a championship game. Are they going to be nervous? Are they going to be too excited? Especially for you poor. None of these guys have ever been here before. So sometimes you got to feel out that first quarter and calm down a little bit. Maybe they can't hear if they get a stop. But now it's second down. Nobody in the backfield is Apple White's going to go with the shotgun run. Feeling pressure. He'll scramble. To the middle of the field. Smith. Touchdown. Bassfield. Wow. Wow, it made it look easy. It, it, he had pressure coming on him early. He was able to roll out and, and here we go right here. He had 54 and both ends get pressure, but he's rolling out and just a breakdown in coverage. That leaves Smith wide open in end zone. Great roll out, great throw. Jeffrey Smith, his eighth touchdown catch of the season. And that's just scary when they hit you with the run all day, and then they can add that element in as well. You go to an empty backfield. You win T team and go to an empty backfield and get on second and 20 in, in 25 yard pass. Extra point for Mancuso is up and good with just over 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is already Bassfield on top of you four, 21 to nothing.
Euphora back on the field to receive the kick from Mancuso. Down 21 nothing. looking for an answer with the first quarter winding down. This time they go squib kick to the right side, grab there, and they will just take a knee after it is recovered by Javoris Drain. So a little different approach there, and no need to take another risk after they fumbled the last kickoff, and Eagles just kneel it and get possession at the 33. You poor need to score and drive right here. I don't care if it's three or a touchdown, touchdown preferably, but they need to move the ball down the field and show their fans and, and their kids that, hey, we can score on basketball. This is a big drive. Still looking for that first, first down of the game, and they're going to go with a little bit of a different look. Wildcat formation with Smith taking the snap. Smith met right in the middle. Big Lindarius Smith for Bassfield. Absolutely. That's a big-time play by your defensive lineman. Nose guard gets good penetration. He wasn't fooled by the Wildcat look at all. When Darius Smith, the senior, goes 225. And talking to Coach Mancuso earlier this week, he said he may not be a Division I type player, but he's definitely a Juco caliber player. And big time performance in a big time first half, excuse me, first quarter, as Bassfield is out to a 21 to nothing lead here in the 2A title game as part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. It's a game changer. I think community colleges are game changers for communities, certainly those in Mississippi, uh, and certainly the ones I've been affiliated with. You lure companies by having the workforce train, and you train the workforce by taking advantage of the community college system. I'm currently suffering from a severe traumatic brain injury. I just want to give up so bad, but I can't. I've got to fight on. This is a text message that caused a car accident that changed my life forever. E-Learning for Educators in partnership with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Improved teacher knowledge. Improved teaching practices. Increased student achievement. Online professional development for educators. Earn CEU credit. Fits easily in your schedule from the convenience of your home. Register for courses now at www.mpbonline.org. Inspired teaching, inspiring students. MPB is committed to helping Mississippi stay healthy. Southern Remedy addresses health questions every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio and tackles issues such as obesity and teen pregnancy on MPB Television. Ed Said encourages children to exercise and eat healthy foods with web-based music videos and with outreach events held throughout Mississippi. Chef Rob Stinson brings healthy recipes to your home with Fit to Eat Thursday nights on MPB Television. Fresh local ingredients play a prominent role in these tasty and nutritious treats. Stay healthy with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Welcome back as we begin the second quarter of the Class 2A state championship game. Bassfield on top of Eupor, 21 to nothing. We want to send it down to the third member of our team, Kim Tanner, on the sidelines with a special guest. With me is Meredith Verdon. She is the manager of corporate communications for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. That's a mouthful. Now, <laughs> you all are a new face to the championships. Yes, we're very glad to be sponsoring as the title sponsor this year. Um, it's very, very important to establish healthy habits early in life, and these students athletes are really a, a shining example of, of how hard work and making good choices, working hard in practice, um, can really benefit on the field and then later in life as well. So, And you all have done many things to help with community involvement. Talk a little bit about why Blue Cross would want to do this. Well, you know, it's we are a Mississippi-based company. We are here for Mississippians, and you know, our message is to, to help them be healthier um, and live healthy lives. So, Thank you very much for being a part of it and helping this broadcast come to you folks at home. Thank you. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Kim. As we return to action, it is second down and 10. Eupora with the football. They are now going left to right on your screen. It is Smith again at quarterback. Smith going to go deep for Jones. Got a little bit of space, but the ball thrown too far. 
So interesting that Coach Graham has now gone with Vandy Smith in at quarterback after Trey Pittman was ineffective in the first quarter. Well, you got to switch it up. You had not been getting much offensive production so far, and you're behind. So you got to go with the quarterback who you feel who you feel feel can get it out there to your best receiver. You see, Coach Graham, he's just he's scrambling for answers right now, and it looks like uh, Pittman is back in at quarterback, third and ten. Flag on the play as Pittman throws to the right side. Great grab over there. Hauled in at midfield by Jones, but we got to check the penalty. Favor may have a legal procedure. Illegal formation on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Tough break for you, Poor. That would have been their first first down of the game. Instead, it moves them back five. It'll be third and 15 facing them. Both of your receivers lined up on the line. This late in the season, you should have those formation issues ironed out, but it's the big game and the big times. So again, you poor are looking for that first first down of the game. Meanwhile, Bassfield has six, and uh, we're looking over the stats. They definitely tell the story of this game so far, but right now, you poor are having trouble with the snap. Mm. And they're going to lose more yardage on that play. And things just really, really aren't going the way of the Eagles. Going from bad to worse. This is just a bobble snap. You never did get it clean from the center. And luckily, they were able to recover the ball. and Try to get a punt to change field position. And maybe you get a break on, on defense. Things just aren't looking good for you poor right now. You remember the last time they dropped back to punt, the big block and the touchdown resulting because of that. So they're going to have to watch the pressure coming from Bassfield this time. It is Pittman to do the kicking. He'll get it off, no pressure. Low bouncer, Cook will let it go. Whoa. Two guys get tangled up right where the ball is at, but is down by Eupora. So in the end of all that, Bassfield will take over at their own 39-yard line. And Jesse, as we look at some of those first-half stats, jumps out at you that Bassfield has 182 yards of total offense compared to 12 for Eupora. That's, that tells the that tells the tale of the game. I mean, 182 yards versus 12 yards. Yapora has to find some way to put some points and and, and get things turned around. They got to put points in the This broadcast is brought to you by the Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. is proud to grow peanuts, which provide plenty of energy for the viewing and playing of Mississippi's high school football. This time to give. Daniels outside, avoids one tackle. He's going to hit the sideline and pushed out inside the 25 by only Derrick Jones, the last line of defense. Again, now he's just hitting them on the edges, hitting them on the edges. They have no, no answer, no, no blocking out front, no pulling. It's just straight, give it to him on the speed sweep, let him get to the edge and make something happen. Missed tackle by Emery, and then Daniels rips off a 38-yard run to put Bassfield <laughs> near the red zone once again. We've seen Williams, we've seen Daniels, we've seen Smith. They're all getting involved. That's a product of the wing team. This time, Keys up the middle. Keys with big room to run. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. There it is. You focus so much on Keys up the middle, and then you get hit on the edges, opens up your defense to give it right back to Keys up the middle. That's the first big run he's had all day. Everything else has been three, five-yard runs. 
Here you go. Give it to him up the middle as, as you soften the defenses. Now they're more focused on the edge and let Jerome Keyes do what he does best. Keyes was mad because I didn't mention him in that list of guys that were having a big day so far. <laughs> we got you now, Jerome. 23 yards on that scoring run. His 24th rushing touchdown of this 2012 season. Mancuso, 3 of 3 on extra points. Go ahead and make that 4 of 4 with 10-18 to play in the second quarter. Wow. Bassfield, as advertised, up 28 to nothing. I mean, how do you respond? What do you tell your kids? I think you just have to take it one step at a time if you're poor. You try to get something positive, but nothing, absolutely nothing's going your way at this point. You know, I haven't had a chance to see Bassfield this season. Heard all about how good they are, and you know they've been compared to some of the other higher classification teams, and, and if they could play with them. And I tell you what, they've come as advertised so far with that speed and just the amount of guys too. It's been everybody getting in on the act. They're a solid overall team. I mean. They have Jerome Keys, who's their featured guy, but they spread it around. And they, their biggest play guys are the guys who you, you've seen today who get the ball and get on the edges with the speed sweeps, get the misdirection. So you just got a solid team putting together an impressive performance here. This time the kick will be fielded and returned for a couple more yards. Tarvis Robinson takes it out to near the 45-yard line. And Pora will set up there. I think if you're your poor at this time, you have to go in a straight drop back and try to get the ball to Derrick Jones, and hopefully he can make an explosive play. At this point, you don't have many options. You can't just afford to sit on the ball and play three yards in a cloud of dust. You need big plays down the field. Jones will head out to the far side of the field. And Pittman will be back in. He's under center. As the Eagles start the drive, he's going to pitch this one. Cut back into the middle of the field. That time, seven-yard pickup for Lazarek Davis. Great run. You get one blocker out front, two. They pick up good blocks, good cutbacks. Seven, seven yards on first down. You get second and third, second with three to go. You can open up the offense now because you know on third down you have short yardage if you don't pick up a big play here. So second time Eupora has been in Bassfield territory today. They give it straight up the middle and a surge in the pile. Looks like it will be good enough for the first Eupora first down of the afternoon. It's a big step. I know. Anything positive right now. That's right. We're the second quarter. We're talking about a first down being a big step. But that's just going to show how dominant Bassfield has been to this point. That was Savon Daughtry getting his first touch of the game. Now they'll pitch it to Davis. Wow. Wow. And it looked like a hole was going to be open out there on the outside, but Simon Johnson closed quick. I mean, that's just great team speed. This is defensive speed at its best. You got blockers out front. You got players pursuing, but just downhill, relentless pursuit. Bassville stepping up and showing that they mean business in two-way football in Mississippi. No gain on that play for Davis. Second and ten from the 45. This time they go play action. Lofted out there. No one in the vicinity, so that pass will drop incomplete as Pittman was feeling the pressure. So what you got to do, you got to get pressure on your quarterback, too. You can't let them stand back and have their way and throw the ball. Big third down coming up. Now third and ten. Jones comes down on the near side. They're going to look his way, but that pass is too far wide. They were looking at Jones, but he was matched up on Michael and goes incomplete. I don't know what, what the problem is, but you have a lot of miscommunications in either the route that the receiver is supposed to run or the route that the quarterback is thinking he's running. 
But uh, the last few passes have all been out in space with no receiver even close to the ball. So in this situation, down 28 to nothing. Going to go ahead and go for it. Pittman drops a little bit farther back, so he will go ahead and snap off a punt. No one back there to receive it, and they'll take a nice little eagle roll inside the 10-yard line, and we'll go ahead and down it there at the 7. Eight twenty-nine to go here in the second quarter. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we will uh, let you in on a little bit of uh, listening pleasure with the bands that both schools have brought. We'll also go over the first half stats and a stat line that has been dominated by Bassfield, and show you some of those big yellow jacket plays that have them out to this twenty-eight to nothing lead. And you see Calvin Moore in at quarterback. Now he got in on the last series, didn't really have to do too much, just hand it off to Keys and he'll hand off up the middle once again. This time Williams breaks a tackle and kind of backpedals to the 20 yard line for a first down. Here it is, just misdirection, fake pitch to the left, hand it off to the guy up front, straight up the middle. I think this you pour up your poor defense is now concerned about the edges, and they're just giving up a soft middle. Calvin Moore is the junior that splits time with Applewhite, and this is kind of the formula. Applewhite will play the first quarter, and then Moore will get the second quarter, and they'll kind of do the same in the second half. Play action. Moore going to roll out. Pass intended for Keys, but a little bit low. And it's got to be tough for Jerome to come up with those catches. He's got that big uh, oven mitt cast on his right wing. I think that's what they're discussing right now when Jerome kind of looked at him and said, man, look at my hand. I mean, you threw me the ball. I, I, you know, I, I, I can't do much with it. So, guess get back in the huddle and let's see what they can do on, on, second, on second down. Moore brings in the play from Mancuso, who serves as the offensive coordinator as well as the head coach for this team. And that traditional wing T look. This time an inside give, and Yipor doing a good job of stuffing the middle on that run. Great play by number 54 for Yipor, coming up and making a solid tackle on the inside. Patrick Marshall, again, third and ten. I think we we'll see something on the edge. It's been working all day. Yeah, they have been able to roll the quarterbacks out, buy them a little time, uh, utilize that mobility, and receivers have then been able to, to come open after that. So, Here comes third and ten for Bassfield. More play action. Has to step up in the wow. pocket, and it will be snagged by the feet. The sack that time by Jamal Roby, his seventh sack of the season. Good, good, good pressure all the way around. He really had nowhere to go. I thought he was going to escape and get out of there, but he was able to get a shoe, shoestring tackle on him to bring him down. Again, good play. Let's see, can you pour a draw from, from a big defensive play in the momentum? First time they've come up with a stop all game. And Cuso to punt. It's going to hit near midfield and then die just inside of it, about 49 yard line. But Bassfield probably happy with that. They kept it out of the hands of Jones, and they've done a good job of keeping the ball out of the hands of Jones almost all afternoon. That was one of the keys to the game is to keep Jones under control. Bassfield has been doing a great job of that so far, but. If you're your poor, you got to find a way. I don't care if you line him up in the backfield, line him up in, in the slot and just throw him a quick swing pass. you got to find a way to get the ball in your best athlete's hand. Again. 
again, this Eupora team has never won a state title. They've gotten here a couple of times before in 1983 and 2002, but come up a game short. Looking to get over that hump today. They just got to get started, though. And that's not a good start. That hurts. I mean, you already, you already playing a basketball team who has momentum, who's playing solid defense, and then coming right off onto the field, you get a delay of game. So moves them back five, back into Eagle territory, and from there, Coach Graham is going to call a timeout. One of the things he did say, though, got a chance to speak with uh, Junior Graham earlier this week, and he talked about the resiliency of this Eupora team. In six games this year, they trailed in the second half, came back to win five of those. The only loss they had all season was way back in September to Calhoun City. In fact, they then got a little revenge on Calhoun City in the third round of the playoffs. So they've been down before. Now, down four touchdowns to Bassfield, that may be a different story. That's the difference. You're in the big game, and, and you're down to an explosive team who's put a lot of points on you right out the gate in the first quarter. How do you get your quarterback to settle down and get your team to settle down and make some positive plays that either equate to first downs or touchdowns? That's the question. So you're going to see Coach trying to do everything he can to figure this thing out and see where basketball may be weak. But as of right now, I just don't see it, Travis. They haven't shown it yet. First and 15 as we return to action. Jones lined up on the right side. It's like they go with the reverse pass. They're going to go deep to Jones. Mm, wow. Into the middle of the field. It is picked off. Trudarian Cook has it. And he's out to the 30-yard line. Another you pour a turnover. Here's the problem with that play. Basketball is running man-to-man -man coverage all the way. When you're running man-to-man -man coverage, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you should be looking at your man and not the quarterback. That's why the defensive backs wasn't fooled. There, there was double coverage on Jones here. Defensive back, he was running with his man, turns around, and looks as if the ball was thrown directly to him. It was a, it was a I, I guess you're trying to create some momentum, trying to get something to happen, go with a, a, a trick play, but against the defensive call, it, it had no possibility of, of being a success. It was Roby that took the reverse and threw the pass, and Cook coming up with the interception. Interception. So here comes Bassfield. They go deep, and that pass is broken up by Derrick Jones, intended out on the outside for Cameron Williams. So you pour it, took a shot downfield. Bassfield tries to do the same. I like Bassfield's mentality right here. Let's put the nail in the coffin. Let's try to put this game away before, even before halftime. Being aggressive in play calling. I love it. On second down, they will give, and then another inside give, but didn't fool anybody that time, especially it didn't fool Markel Eichelberger. There it is. One of the best defensive players again coming up, making a huge stop. You go with the with the reverse speed sweep reverse, but Eichelberger was never fooled. He was coming upfield, getting deep as the deepest man. Deepest man was still coming his way. Great play. Hopefully this can be the momentum swing that uh, Eupora needs to get back in this game and change the field position. You know, they got to stop on the last bass field possession. They've got him in third and 15 here. So figuring a few things out on the defensive side. So bass field facing third and long, and they'll give it up the middle to Keys. Keys with about five yards, but well short of a first down. Good safe call by Bassfield. Let's just take the five yards, bring the punt team on punt. Our defense is playing well. Don't want to give them great field position where they may be able to get a score on the board and get some more momentum. Conservative call. You saw Bassfield go after a punt earlier and get one. Maybe Eupora tries to take a chance. Snap to Mancuso, he gets it off. Low liner, grabbed by Jones. Jones, bottled up around the 50 and pushed out of bounds at around the 46. So, 
as much as they've struggled, Uport has been in Bassfield territory a couple of times, but they haven't been able to hit that big play and get any points out of it. But they've they've had chances. They've had chances, but every chance they've gotten, they've shot themselves in the foot. Um, they have to put together a solid, mistake-free drive here in order to put something on the board going into halftime. It would be a, a big momentum boost under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Wildcat formation again with your quarterback spread out wide. Vandy Smith taking the snap. Smith will keep. And Smith plugs forward for about four on that play. So not bad yardage on first down. Big Deladaria Smith up, coming up to make the tackle again. Bassville has been playing solid defense. We've been talking about the offense a lot, but they've been playing solid defense here. Now it's Pittman back under center on second down. He'll pitch it out to Davis. Davis tries to stretch, but it's so hard to get to the edges on Bassfield. Man, the yellow, the yellow jackets are swarming. I mean, you have eight guys on the football at one time. They're flying to the ball. Everybody's getting there. They're playing as if they want this game and want to win. I mean, we've talked so much about the offense and how explosive it is, over 40 points a game. The defense given up just over seven points a game. They've been just as dominant, and they pitched five shutouts as well. That's impressive. So now third and five, they go with Vandy Smith back in the Wildcat formation. High snap. Smith corrals it and gets bottled up. Going to lose a yard that time as... Dentario McLeod came through and grabbed him. The brakes just aren't going you pull his way. I mean, every time you see something happens when you think they have an opportunity to do something positive, they shoot themselves in the foot with a fumble, a uh, bad snap. They're going to go for it right here on fourth down and maybe another pooch punt. Yeah, they, they line up in this similar formation earlier in the quarter, and Pittman went ahead and kicked it, but fourth and five, ball just outside the 40-yard line. This this may be a time to take a chance and maybe a time to take a timeout, which is what Junior Graham will do to discuss this, their final timeout of the half. If you're Coach Graham, do you go ahead and go for this? I mean, you kind of don't have much to lose at this point. Down 28-0, you need some sort of spot to get your team. I mean, you, you give them the ball. If you go for it, you give them the ball still on – um, your 40. They have a good ways to go, so I think this is an opportunity to go for it on fourth and fourth and five. Remember that you can own your own keepsake from this exciting matchup as well as all the other state championship games by going to missaa-network.com and you can purchase a DVD copy of all of these state championship games. Coming out of the timeout, it looks like Yupor will send the offense back out onto the field, and it seems like you would look Jones's way on a, on a on a play like this. Well, I think you you send him lining up with Jones in the backfield to try to give him a look, and he'll probably shift out and motion out of this formation and to try to get single coverage. They will swing it to Jones. Got it, and the first down. That's what you got to do. You, you were got, in the huddle there. <laughs> you got to put him. I mean, right now, if he lines up out wide, they're doubling. Put him in the backfield. Swing the ball out. Get the ball to your best athlete in space and make Bassville rally to the ball and tackle. So Derek Jones with the first down grab, his first catch of the game. Now they'll give it right up to middle and absolutely nowhere to go. Jeffrey Smith in on the tackle as well as Jimmy Funches. Nothing there for Daughtry. You get a look at Smith. He was one of two guys that played on that 2009 championship team. He played special teams, got a little bit of action. And then at linebacker, James Graves was a starter as a freshman, so he saw a lot of action in that game. And 
right up the middle. See Graves in on a little bit of that tackle right there as well as Alvin Moore. Just a few yards for Vandy Smith. Third and about seven is going to be an interesting play call here. Let's see what Eupora does. Got Derek Jones coming down uh, wide at the bottom of your screen. Again, they're going to give it right up the middle to Smith. Not much doing there. A gain of about a yard. We saw him go for it on fourth down just a few seconds earlier. I would imagine they would do the same here. Clock ticks down under 130 to go in the half. Officials stop the clock while they exchange footballs in and out. So fourth and seven for Eupora. High snap. Pittman corrals it. Looks deep, but too far out of bounds. Looking for Davis that way. And that'll be a turnover on downs. You can't question the call there. I mean, he's fourth down. Down 28-0 going in the, in the half. You have to try to get something positive going. It's just unfortunate the throw was off and out of bounds. Saw it there on Pittman's face. A little bit of frustration. All right, All right Travis. Does Bassfield get conservative and just go in with a 28-0 lead? Or mm, it... Probably not. I don't think so. They'll hand off to Williams. Gets a good block. Makes a cut back. Spins. And he might have done enough to get a first down. That would stop the clock. It's a great run right here. Great eyes and great read. Look, nothing's there. Cut it back to the backside. Luckily, the Yapor defense was pursuing. And great tackle by number 14. So he comes up just short of the first down. And clock continues to run. So Bassfield may be content just to... Let this wind down, and they got to be feeling pretty good about a 28-0 lead. But this time they will throw the ball. Rolling out to the near side is Calvin Moore. Going to tuck it and run past the 40. Good enough for a Bassfield first down. 23 seconds to go. That's a smart play. You, you have the ball. A lot of field to go. You're up 28-0. Don't get greedy. Don't throw an interception. If it's not there, tuck it, take what you can get, get the first down, stop the clock, get an opportunity to try it again. Bassville does have two timeouts left to use if they so choose here in the first half. Moore, again, feeling the pressure. He'll take off. Breaks one tackle. Now Moore's got a little bit of running room. Down past midfield. And grab there another Bassfield first down. It's just a creative play. The play broke down. Nobody was there. Great athlete making a big play. Good. good. I mean, you have, you poor has players there in position to make a tackle, but it's just great athlete making it. But let's take a shot. You Incomplete pass, stops the clock, you get an opportunity to try it again. I definitely don't think we'll see a run here. I think we'll see something, try to stretch the field and throw it deep. Marshall there to end the half, so they keep Bassfield at 28-0. It's been 28-0 for a while, so a couple of stops there for you poor late in the half, but for the most part, dominated these first two quarters by the Bassfield Yellow Jackets. Very, very impressive what they've done. Absolutely. Yupora has to find some way to settle down and come out and strike early and quick on Bassville to try to turn the tide. Back. Thank you. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Kim, and uh, a lot for Coach Mancuso to be excited about, but he'll remain focused and have his guys ready. Up 28 to nothing on Yupora in this Class 2A state championship game, all part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. Improved teacher knowledge, improved teaching practices, increased student achievement, 
online professional development for educators. Earn CEU credit. Fits easily in your schedule from the convenience of your home. Register for courses now at www.mpbonline.org. Inspired teaching, inspiring students. It is halftime of the MHSAA Class 2A Championship game. The Bassfield Yellow Jackets lead Eupora 28 to nothing right now. The Yellow Jacket band on the field. We're going to take you down there and let you in for a little bit of listening. Field Yellow Jacket Band performing here at halftime. I want to go ahead and send it back down to Kim Tanner on the sidelines, who is joined by the Bassfield principal, Mr. John Daly. Actually, with me right this second, Ike Haynes, the superintendent. Our principal is on the way. He snuck a peek of the band just then, but he's going to make his way over. First, tell me a little bit about how the community has supported you all this week. Big time. You know, uh, many of us in Bassfield think that it's our birthright that we end up in the state championship every year, but I'm going to tell you, um, the community, the head coaches, everybody has come together and has supported the Bass for Yellow Jackets, and we are half away from having a perfect season, and we could be more elated. And let's talk a little bit about history while we're here not too long ago. Well, 2009, and since then, we've lost twice in South State, so that just goes to show you that South State, South Mississippi has some good football, some good programs, but we might be proud to be here uh, a half away from a perfect season in our fifth state championship. All right. And I think we've been joined now with our principal here, uh, John Daly. And I'm not going to make a joke that you were out playing golf. I'll leave that alone. Uh, tell me a little bit, too, about school specifically. Did, did you have big pep rallies, that sort of thing? We had a big community-wide pep rally last night. Uh, we Bassfield is on top of Eupora. We'll have more of the halftime show coming up in just a minute here on the MHSAA Network.
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Welcome back to halftime of the Class 2A championship game. The Eupora Band getting set up on the field right now. And we go back down to the field where Kim Tanner is joined by someone from Eupora. Kim? Thank you. With me right now, I have the principal from Eupora High School, Lacey Knight, as well as the superintendent, Jack Trelore. And, you know, what a great thing for you all to be here and, and a great record. Talk to me a little bit about your school and also about the involvement of the community this week. We are very, very thankful uh, for the opportunity that we have to be here. Um, it's been a special football season. The community has turned out well, as you can hear. Talk to me about how the community has supported you all. Uh, the community has always supported us. We've been, we're truly best, blessed with the best fans, uh, the best student body. Uh, our faculty and staff is second to none, and we're, we're so proud to be here tonight, and we're certainly proud of our fans. Well, it's going to be a good second half. Things could go either way at this point, so we're going to let the guys in the booth have it back. They're going to talk more about the game, but thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Travis. Thank you, Kim, and uh, we will send it down to the field and uh, let everybody get a little glimpse of the Eupora band here at halftime.
That is the Eupora Eagle Marching High School Band. It is halftime here, the Class 2A Championship game. Bassfield on top of Eupora, 28 to nothing. And uh, it was a first half of big plays and big numbers, most notably for Bassfield. That's how they built this 28 to nothing lead. You see it right here on the opening possession. The scoring started when Rod Williams got free, Jesse, for 65. Touchdown! That's a big play that helped propel them to two score, being two scores up. Then the squib kick. They're trying to keep the ball away from uh, Derek Jones. Squib kick gets fumbled. Bassville jumps on top of it and makes him pay. Coming back with a touchdown pass right there, 25-yard touchdown pass. And then Jerry is Jerome Keys up the middle. It's the guy who we said had to have a big game as a score. Put, put uh, Bassville up 28-0 going into the half. And you look at some of those numbers from the first half, and it's pretty easy to start right at those first two columns, Jesse, and you see a glaring difference on the side of Bassfield. That's the tell of the game. First downs, only two first downs for Eupor. Bassville, 20, uh, 11 uh, first downs, which doesn't really tell about. Let's go down to the, to the yardage, all-purpose yardage, 375 to 44. Huge and difference. Time of possession, kind of fairly even, but uh, didn't really matter because Upor was unable to capitalize on any of those drives they had. Let's send it back down to Kim, who's on the sidelines with another special guest. Ricky Neves is Associate Director of Athletics for the Mississippi High School Activities Association. And quickly, I wanted to talk to you about reclassification because I know that's something that's been going on here recently. Explain a little bit about how that works. The way that works is we take the number of students uh, turned into the State Department of Education for each school after the second month's enrollment and get their total number. The top 32 schools in the state are classified as 6A, the next 32, 5A. We divide the rest by four and, and break them as evenly as possible into the other four classifications. Well, quickly, uh, they're coming around us here, but uh, tell me, uh, did any big shakeups happen? Anything that's going to change the face of the championships this weekend? Uh, well, well, we'll still have six classifications. There was a lot of movement. For instance, Startville, who's playing in a 5A championship tonight, uh, will now be 6A beginning with next school year, along with a couple of other schools that moved up. Of course, the way everything works, when someone moves up, someone has to come down. So there are new schools in each classification and, and a few new regions uh, that will renew some old rivalries and create some new ones. So uh, we think it'll be an exciting two years in all sports. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for what you do at the Activities Association. Thank you. Travis, we'll let y'all have it back. Thanks a lot, Kim. We're about ready for the second half of this Class 2A championship. Championship game, all part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. The 2012 Gridiron Classic is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Now more than ever, it's good to be blue. Bank Plus, it's more than a name, it's a promise. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. And energy for the Mississippi High School Football Championships brought to you by Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. One morning I was driving to work. All of a sudden I got this real bad headache. When Mary arrived, she was at death's doorstep. She had bled into her brain from a ruptured aneurysm. I was scared because I didn't know what was going on. We were able to quickly diagnose that, got her to our NGO suite. I just went numb because you don't think of brain surgeries and success stories. They got in there and they did the surgery and I had my mom. It's a game changer. I think community colleges are game changers for communities, certainly those in Mississippi uh, and certainly the ones I've been affiliated with. You lure companies by having the workforce train and you train the workforce by taking advantage of the community college system. It's about a passion and an ingenuity 
in our employees that is unparalleled. They represent a, a passion for what they do. This is not about any one person. It's about a group of individuals all working together to make a company. Sunday at 1 p.m. on MPB. Legendary rocker Rod Stewart comes to great performances with his first ever holiday special. Merry little Christmas. With guests Mary J. Blige, Michael Bublé, CeeLo Green, and more. Enjoy Rod Stewart in this swinging Yule Time treat. Merry Christmas, baby. Sure to treat me. Merry Christmas, baby, from great performances. Tuesday at 8.30 on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We are back getting ready for the second half of this Class 2A state championship game here at the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. A first half dominated by the Bassfield Yellow Jackets. They lead Eupora 28 to nothing. So, Jesse, if you're Coach Graham in the locker room at halftime, your guys are down four touchdowns. What are you telling the team? Tell them we have to come back out and get this game under control one possession at a time. You can't get all 28 points back at one time, but you can just methodically and slowly do what you do that got you here. We need one big play. I look to my big-time guy and say, Derek, I need you to step up and make a big play. We're going to you. We're going to get the ball in your hands early. Make something happen for us. And just a few moments ago, our Kim Tanner caught up with Coach Graham. Coach, a few, a few turnovers early on, but your defense was starting to turn things around and make some really good stops in the second half. What changes are you going to see? Well, we're, we were excited the way we ended the first half. We got a couple uh, first downs offensively, and our defense went back to back to back stops. So, you know, we just hope that carries over in the second half and maybe get a big play here or there and, and maybe get back in this thing. All right. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Jesse, he said it right there. He said the big play and something to turn the momentum. Now, Eupor will have to kick off, though, because Bassfield won the opening toss. They deferred to the second half. And I saw an interesting tweet earlier that said uh, Bassfield has won all 16 tosses this season, and they're half away from winning all 16 games as well. <laughs> wow. When things go your way, they go your way. So uh, here we go for the second half of this Class 2A state championship game. Back deep to receive for the Yellow Jackets. They will send Curtis Michael along with Rod Williams. And Williams had a huge first half on the ground, already over 100 yards rushing at the 65-yard TD. Now he's back as one of the deep men here. He kicked to the near side, and the knee went down, so no chance for a return there. Daniels coming up with the grab and had to kind of go down to, to make to secure the catch. So 25-yard line is where Bassfield will start the second half of play. And when they do, they will send Jomez Applewhite back in at quarterback. He was very effective playing the first quarter of this game before Calvin Moore came in second quarter. He was, but Coach sticking with his what, what he did all season long, and that's rotate quarterbacks every quarter. Williams coming in motion. Excuse me, Daniels breaks a tackle along the far side. Daniels will cut it back past the 30-yard line, and nice six-yard gain to start for Bassfield. You see they're switching it up a little bit. If, uh, first half, they started with the first and second down, runs up the middle, and then stretched the edges. This time they tried to catch uh, Upora off guard and start out hitting the edges, and maybe they're going to come back with uh, Jerome Keys up the middle. Daniels only two carries in the first half, but one of them went for 38 yards, so uh, he's been effective in the limited touches. Now on second down. This time it will go to that man, Keys, club and all. He fights forward to the 40 and a first down. That's it. Basketball doesn't do a lot of things, but they do what they do, and they do it well. And it's Jerome Keys up the middle, the other guys, Williams on the edges, and just make you play defense from inside out. I got to imagine Coach Mancuso more than happy to run, milk clock, and uh, keep control of the football in the second half. Absolutely. I don't think you'll see Bassford putting the ball in there much. 
This time they give it to Williams coming near side. Penalty, though. This one may be coming back. Yeah, we got a holding on the second level. One of the guards held the linebacker. Check on the penalty here. Holding. Offense. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Remind you that you can show your spirit by texting your school's keyword to 46786. Eupora, your keyword is gridiron4. Gridiron, the number four, Bassfield. Your keyword is gridiron3. The school with the most votes at the end of this game will win $1,000 in donation from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. And again, standard text messaging rates apply. One vote per phone will be counted. So the penalty is on Bassfield. That'll bring up first and long, but they get it inside Daniels' room. Cut back, middle of the field. Daniels may go. Charger Daniels untouched for a Bassfield touchdown. 79 yards. Wow, there it is. Hit you up the middle, then come back with the power and hit right off tackle. I mean, that's a great play. You'll see it right here. Get your guard out front. He seals you back. and gets enough of you back to turn it in. After that, let your athlete do what he does best. Make people miss. Turn it on. Set great 79-yard run. Wow. That is as quick as that. That's how they do it. That's how they started the first the first quarter. With a quick score right, score right out the gate. They come out the second half with the same thing. From Newport, at this, at this point, you have to say, what can we do to answer? Or can we answer? Cuso's extra point attempt is up and good. 35 to nothing. Bassfield extends their lead on the opening possession of the second half. So we've seen Smith score a touchdown. We've seen Keys in the end zone, Williams, and now Daniels. All of them getting their hands on the football and finding the end zone. This portion of the program is brought to you by the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Be strong, be healthy, be blue. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. It is good to be blue. And there's plenty of reason to dance for the Bassfield faithful. They can feel the title coming back their way. I mean, with their team playing this strong and scoring this quick, basically scoring at will, they have a lot of things to cheer for. And, you know, if you're, you're poor, what can you do? you got to get the ball in Derrick Jones' hand. I would look for Derrick Jones maybe to slide up and try to get a hold of the squib kick and make something happen here on this kickoff. But, as you see, they're lining the ball up to go the other way. So even after Bassfield got behind the chains there on that first down penalty, it is Daniels with the 71-yard touchdown run. That puts him over 100 on the ground today. Short kick, fielded that time by Davis, and Davis brings it out past the 40. So already early third quarter, and you have two Bassfield running backs with over 100 yards. They came into the game with two guys over 1,000 yards for the season, so you see that variety that they bring. That's just a product of the offense they run. Everybody's going to get touches. It's misdirection. They, they have their key guy who is Jerome Key, but everybody else gets their touches to make their, have their opportunities for the big plays. So the Eagles will start at the 41-yard line, give up the middle. Andy Smith nowhere to go. Snatched by the jersey and driven backwards. There he is. There's a nose guard again. Big number 74, Kenny Murrow. I mean, just coming up and making big plays. It's, sorry, it's 77. Coming up making big plays. If they want to go with the dive, he's there to stop it every time. And again, as much as we focused on Derrick Jones and the role he needed to play, one catch for only 10 yards in the first half and Jones will go out to the slot at the top of the screen. Single coverage. They'll look that way but they'll go to the outside pass off the outstretched arms of Jamal Roby. Yeah, 
Got pressure on the quarterback again. He knows guard up the middle. Number 77, the Darius Smith. Got great pressure. That's what you need. If they're going to drop back and pass, you know, in order to do something with this lead that Bassville has, they have to put the ball in the air. As a defensive lineman, that's what you want. Pin your ears back and go get it. So here on third down, they wing it out. Pass intended that time for Rusty Johnson, but too high, and that'll bring up fourth and ten. If you're going to pass, you got to get the ball. you got to give your receivers a chance. And right now, those balls are a little bit out of the receivers' hands. They can't even get, uh, get an opportunity to make plays on them. So three and out for you poor on their first possession. That'll force Pittman in to punt. Pittman punted five times in the first half. Pretty good average of 43 yards per kick, but that one is off the side of his foot. And not very far, just past midfield. So Bassfield again will take over in good field position. Under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Just 21 yards on the Trey Pittman punt. Twelve yards. Twelve yards on the Trey Pittman punt. My math is backwards today. But the only math that matters right now is that at the top of your screen. 35 points for Bassfield, zero for Eupora, and the Yellow Jackets once again with the football. It'll be Applewhite rolling to his right side. He's going to tuck and run, but a good job there by Eichelberger with the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Eichelberger's been a sure tackle all year, coming into this game with over 100 tackles. Great play, making an open field tackle on a great and athletic quarterback. It's what they need, but once they get these guys, they need to start trying to strip the ball, get the ball on the ground. Mm -hmm. They were able to force one turnover, and they did it pretty early in the game. They got Rod Williams to fumble and recovered, but weren't able to capitalize on that. Bassfield's protected the ball since. That'll bring up second and nine near midfield. Penalty on the play. Ball start. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Penalties don't usually seem to bother Bassfield too much. It happened on the last possession, and they scored the ensuing play. Take a look at Coach Mancuso, year number four for him at Bassfield, and unbelievable what he's done with this program. 62-12, and 12, his record entering this game. Handoff up the middle. Keys has room. Keys breaks one tackle. Keys another. Pushing, fighting inside the 25-yard line. Big Jerome Keys. There he is. Our guy who we said had to have a great game in order for Bassville to be successful. He's getting some help from his supporting cast, but this is what he does. Give me the ball up the middle. I make people miss. I break tackles. He's not a flashy back. He's a straight north-south runner who, who makes the cuts when he needs to, but he breaks a lot of tackles. Great job by Jerome Keyes. Jerome Keyes, 35 yards, his longest run of the afternoon. And that puts Bassfield with three guys now over 100 yards rushing. Williams, Keyes, and Daniels. Wow. It's a first down just outside the 20. Applewhite looking to throw. Again, pressure. Avoids some of it. Gets the pass off just a little bit too low, though, but shifty as he drops back and uh, avoids those defenders. Absolutely. As you see, Bassett is going to continue to run their offense. They're going to pass the ball. They're going to run the ball. Coach Mancuso says he's not going to conservative offense. He's, he's doing what got him here, and that's running the ball, passing the ball, having a wide open offense.
Oh, second down. This time Applewhite will give inside. Not much running room there as Patrick Marshall gets the stop in the backfield. And Marshall has had a solid game for Eupora. He has. I mean, it's unfortunate we hadn't called his name much. He's been on a lot of plays, but as soon as he's on a play, they, basketball comes back with a big play. Solid linebacker who's stepping up and, and, and helping out, but... You know, like I said, when he comes and make those makes those plays, they need guys in there trying to rip that ball out. You poor needs the ball. The clock winding down to seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Third down and ten for Bassfield at the U poor twenty three. Applewhite. Little confusion as he gives it to Williams. Williams tripped up in the backfield. That play had trouble written on it from the get-go, and Savon Daughtry makes a good stop for a loss. Yeah, Bassville, they, they tried to get a little uh, tricky with, with the play calling and just had a misalignment. Of, I don't know if he was supposed to get the ball or not, but he took it. Tackle for loss, come back, huddle up. Uh, what, fourth down, ball on the 27. See what play call is here. So fourth and long, offense stays on the field. Apple White will throw. Just off the outstretched arms of his intended receiver, Tredarren Cook, there at the goal line, got his mitts on it, but couldn't corral it. So good stop there for Yupora. Turnover on downs. Once again, if you want to purchase a DVD keepsake of this, you can do that for this matchup as well as all the other state championship games by going to M-I-S-S-H-S-A-A-Network.com and purchase your DVD copy. So, the Eagles take over after the turnover on downs. First down. They get Vandy Smith the football and a pitch out to the near side and about a yard or two. Not too much going there for Smith. Tell you what I'm impressed with is the aggressive and fast play of the basketball defense. They're playing downhill. They're not allowing the core to come and attack them and playing defensive football. They're playing aggressive. They're playing on the other side of the line. I like to see that from the defense. Well, and I've heard all about this bass field speed all season, but it was interesting talking to Coach Mancuso earlier this week. And Smith has nowhere to go that time. What he said is, sure, we're fast, but we play without hesitation. And so that makes it look like we're even faster because they're not thinking, they're just reacting. Absolutely. That's what you want. You want to keep a system that's, that's simple, that your guys can grasp and know exactly what their assignment is. When you do that, you take the thinking out of the game, and you just let, you allow your athletes to play ball and to play fast and aggressive, and that's what he's done with his defense. So after two Vandy Smith runs, it'll be third and six coming up for you, Pora. High snap, but Pittman brings it down. Oh, pass almost intercepted. Look like. Cook was coming over to make a play on the ball and almost uh, a better defensive play by Roby to upend him and prevent the interception. Absolutely. He had focused in on that ball. Bad snap. We've been seeing this all night long. High throw. He misses receiver and it's a great play by the defensive back. The receiver had to become the defensive back and try to break up the pass. Mm. He popped right up. So you poor will be forced to punt once again. Last time Pittman didn't get off a good one, only went 12 yards. This will be his seventh punt of the game. This one low, takes a pretty good roll down inside the 40 yard line and will be down at the 36. So that's where Bassfield will take over. Still up 35 to nothing, under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. And for Bassfield, this kind of follows the formula of the way most of their games have gone this season. They've blown a lot of opponents out. Really, their toughest test came last week against East Marion. They trailed that game 
into the fourth quarter. Had to have a late drive. Keyed by Jerome Keyes putting in a touchdown, and they got the victory 17-14. But after, besides that game, they, they've really handled most of their opponents, and they're handling you poor right now. Here comes Daniels. If it weren't for a uh, jersey-grabbing tackle by Smith there, Daniels was about to break loose. It is. I think you... <laughs> Here it is. Javar is going to speed sweep again, try to get their speed out on the edges of the defense. If it wasn't for Vandy Smith there grabbing a little of uh, the cloth, he may still be running for another seven. Jerome Key's turn. He lines up behind Applewhite here on second down. Oh, he'll give the inside give to Williams. Williams, though. Grab as Smith was there, uh, along with a little bit of help on that side of the ball from Frank Elam. Here it is, Speed Sweet back the other way. Try to get your speedsters out on the edges. Same play, just flipped the other way. Same guy making the tackle, Vandy Smith. He's all over the field. Smith coming in, had 91 tackles entering this ball game, and he's been the leading tackler all day for Upora as well. Had nine in the first half to get him to 100, so he's been a man out there. He's doing what he can. Here's another inside give. Wow. Utrell for Williams. Williams tripped up. Wow. It's a beautifully designed play. Williams will take that down into you poor territory. First time we've seen him run this play today, they line Williams out wide to bring him right back in the middle in the traffic. The hole was wide open. Bassman showing some, some diversity in their play call. The drive continues. First down in Eagle territory. This time, Keys stuffed. Didn't get a chance to get going at all. Patrick Marshall once again the first to make contact. Patrick Marshall making the in, getting a good inside push. Keys had didn't get an opportunity to get going that time. Great play by 54 Marshall. Keys loses a yard on that play. So second and eleven ball. Just inside you poor territory as we approach the two-minute mark of the third quarter. 35 to nothing lead for the Yellow Jackets. Content to keep it on the ground. This time, Daniels. First down and more. Daniels inside the 35. Here it is, coming back the other way. He got two linemen pulling out front. Both get good blocks. Then it's just left to Daniels to do what he does and make people miss and get up the field. Basketball still being aggressive in that play call and going down the field. Charger Daniels only a sophomore. He came into this game with 811 yards rushing. He may approach that 1,000-yard mark with the afternoon performance that he's putting on right now. Has a score and has over 100 yards. So another first down for Bassfield. Keys tripped right at the line of scrimmage. Roby there down on the ground to make that play. I think you're seeing Yupor go to a different style of defense. They're trying to be a little bit more aggressive and blitzing and getting people to play on the other side of the ball. Now that can, with the misdirection offense such as we have with Bassfield, that can burn you. But right now it's paying dividends on Jerome Keys and stopping his momentum up front, up the middle. So this is one of those long, time-consuming drives that Coach Mancuso has probably got to love with the lead right now. Under a minute to go here in the third. And again, on the ground. Williams. Williams to the outside. Williams stumbles inside the 10, but we do have a flag in the backfield. And that may be coming back also. Yeah, we have two holdings, one at the line of scrimmage and one on the second level on the linebacker. What? 
and sort out both of these flags. Two flags on the play. Holding. Offense. That penalty's declined. Holding. Offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. So that negates a big run for Rod Williams and moves Bassfield back to the 44-yard line. You get a look at Coach Mancuso. Like we said, he helped lead this Bassfield team to a state title in 2009. He has another state title as a head coach and his time at seminary. So looking for number three this afternoon. Here on second down, up the middle, Keys inside the 40. Looks like that might be the final play of this third quarter. Bassfield probably content letting the clock wind down. They had the big play to start the second half, the long touchdown run by Daniels to get up 35 to nothing, and they hold that lead as we get ready for the final quarter of action in this 2A state championship game, all part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Red Iron Classic. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. What if Eli Manning had never played football? Let's do this. <laughs> Even if Eli wasn't a star, he'd still be treated like one at Bank Plus. Bank Plus. It's more than a name. It's a promise. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. broadcast of the MHSAA football tournament on MPB is made possible in part by Chimneyville Smokehouse. Smoking Mississippi since 1989. Applebee's. What can you do in 12 minutes about lunch at Applebee's? Soul Shine Pizza Factory. Feel the love and Mama Hamels serving up scrumptious southern comfort food. Getting ready for the fourth quarter here. Let's send it down to Kim Tanner on the sidelines. With me is Malcolm Broom, the executive director of the Mississippi Peanut Growers Association and a new sponsor here at the championship games. First of all, thanks for being a part, but tell us what drew you to these games. The Mississippi Peanut Growers wanted to participate in high school activities, and the reason is we'd like to see peanut butter and peanut products eaten by all these children because it's energy for the good life, what we say. And so we felt compelled that maybe this would be another way that we could get peanuts out there and 
have them in the schools. Well, I know they greatly appreciate your involvement, and I appreciate your time. I think they're ready to play some ball. I think so. Right. We're glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Kim. Ready for the final quarter of this 2A championship game. Bassfield with the ball and the lead. They face third down and 15. Conservative give up the middle. Goes for no yardage, so Bassfield will send in the punting unit. That'll bring in Mancuso to kick away to Jones. And Jones will field inside the 10 and works it just a few yards up the field down to about the 14. So more tough field position for you poor to start this drive. You can tell Derek Jones wants to be involved in this game. That was one I could hear from here. The coach is telling him, let it go. But he still, he wanted to get his hands on that ball and try to make something happen. Maybe they can get the ball in his hands this possession and he can break one to put you poor on the board. Yeah, at this point, Uporo would, would probably just like to take the goose egg off the scoreboard. You know, they've had such a great season. like to end on a positive note here. It was a nice run up the middle, but a big stick as James Graves comes from that middle linebacker position to make the tackle. It's the way you lay the hammer down. You see that back press in the hole. You come and fill it right away. Great hit by James Graves. Right there, coming downhill, whack. Help. Second and seven, Bandy Smith, number seven, gets that carry, and he tries to stretch it out. Not going to work. James Graves again. Great downhill play from the middle linebacker. You see it. You see flow that way. Go and get it. I mean, Bassville didn't let up that up there at all. Like we said, they have five shutouts this season. They're primed for number six if they can hold on for another 10 plus minutes. Once again, third and long, familiar territory for Eupora. Hit in the backfield is Eric Davis. Nowhere to go and loses his lead. This Bassville defense has stepped it up a notch. I don't know what happened, but I mean, they've been playing solid defense, but now they're getting really aggressive and coming and laying some, some hits. They're just taking the fight out of your boy. See you know, the, it was interesting to hear Coach Mancuso right before halftime talk about trying to make sure his guys have that same energy when they returned in the second half, and they have. It's, it's tough to do when a team is up by so much. Here comes the eighth punt of the game. High snap. Pittman, though, gets it away. Doesn't get it too far down the field. It'll bounce and take a little eagle roll about the 40. That's where Bassfield will take over. 9.33 to go. They're inching ever closer to the fifth state title in program history. This portion of the program brought to you by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. They're an official partner of the Mississippi High School Activities Association. Go with the home team. So first down, Applewhite still in the game. He'll pitch it back. Keys. A run of 13. It's the first time we've seen Keys take the ball outside of the A gap. It worked for him. Great pickup. He's mad that he, he couldn't make that one guy miss for the final score. Sweet. First time he's taking the ball outside of uh, with an outside run. Great pickup. Bassville still pressing for the end zone. 
First down now inside the 30-yard line. Keys once again. And there's plenty of room for him to run, not being touched until he's five yards down the field. And you see that Coach Mancuso has left the senior, Jomez Applewhite, in the game at quarterback. You know, probably uh, a little tribute to him for all he's done in this program. Let him play this final quarter. Calvin Moore will definitely have his time next season. And Keyes, another senior, has his time right now. So Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. On the past three times he's touched the ball, you can see him running with a different passion and aggression. He was smelling that end zone. He wasn't going to be denied. Here he is. Same pitch as two plays ago. Get downhill. He just pressed the whole run straight in for the end zone. Jerome Keys, 18 carries, a buck 51, and two touchdowns this afternoon. The senior, impressive. Again, starting off this game, we were asked, who's the guy who... Well, we got ahead of ourselves a little bit there. Uh, missed the flag that was on the field, so that's going to negate the second touchdown for Jerome Keyes and instead bring it back to the 24. I see Jerome Keyes right. From that time, Rod Williams on the carry. Nope, excuse me, they got a new back in there. That's Simon Johnson now getting his hands on the football. Yeah, I see that uh, Bassville starting to play some of their younger guys. Give them an opportunity to see what it feels like to play in the big game. So now third and short. White will pitch. First down and down to the 10 yard line. Here goes Johnson once again. Oh, but they're saying he lost the football in the pile and Eupora has come up with a turnover. Wow. You know, this is, uh, obviously this is a little bit too little, too late, but it's something that uh, Newport can use to, to try to spark a fight and maybe get on the board. So the Eagles regain possession, keep Bassfield out of the end zone after a touchdown was called back by penalty, and then they get the fumble. Second turnover created by Eupora this afternoon. Send the offense back on the field. Down 35 nothing. 7.37 to go. And that time, the ball is coughed up. And guess what? It's going right back to Bassfield. Wow, that's the way this game's been going all, all night long. See, we got a flag on the field. Let's wait and see what. I think that might have been after the play. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. White team. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. So the turnover stands for Bassfield. They'll just have to move it back to the 25-yard line. And just when the Eagles get a gift, they give one right back to Bassfield. Earlier today, we had a really close ball game in the 1A title matchup as Stringer took down French Camp 20-17. to The Red Devils capturing the 1A championship. And tonight, the major showdown in Class 6A. The Brandon Bulldogs out of the South taking on the mighty South Panola Tigers. After a one-year hiatus, South Panola is back in Jackson. Take a look at it right there. A pair of two lost teams, and these are heavyweights, Jesse. Absolutely. I've had the opportunity to play um, in two state championships, both times against South Panola. 
they bring it. They have a great football tradition and program there. And we get an opportunity to try to go for another state championship tonight. Bassfield back on offense. Williams avoids one tackle and scores free for a couple of yards. So you were a part of some of those those major South Panola Moss Point showdowns, huh? Absolutely. 96 and 97. I mean, you're talking about great games. Went on to play with a bunch of the guys. Uh, Eddie Strong towards Sanford uh, at Ole Miss. Two great teams, two great programs battling it out here in Jackson. South Panola has been able to go on. We beat them back-to-back uh, -back, uh, state championships, but they've been able to go on and put together a great string of championships and win. Yeah, they have won quite a few. Here goes Keys. Keys bouncing off, spinning, staying on his feet inside the five-yard line, and it's like he's stronger late in the game. He is. It's something that's going on. He wants this last touchdown, and I think you, you can see that Coach is going to try to give him an opportunity to get there. He's aggressively running for the end zone. Again, straight play. They give it to him on the little toss on the outside. Let him do the rest. Spinning, hitting, breaking tackles. He wants this opportunity to get an end zone one last time. Let's see if uh, Coach Mancuso will, will feed number 33 once again. Oh, this time around the outside, stretched, but going to mark him down at the one-yard line. It is Daniels once again. And we have an official's timeout as a player is hurt here for Eupora. Looks like it's going to be number 72, Jarquez McBride. Looks like a cramp. You know, it was pretty warm when this game started at 3 o'clock, and now that the sun's gone down, it's cool. Feels pretty good, though. Um, couldn't ask for much better weather for this weekend. Are you a high school sports fan? If so, join the conversation about high school sports, not only here in Mississippi, but across the country. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Play on Sports. And check out playonsports.com for comprehensive state-by-state, -state, regular season, and championship coverage. There we go. Second and goal from the one. We give that time... Ramez Green and, and he slips. Green was going to get his chance to get in the end zone, but uh, his feet got ahead of him. <laughs> he saw it. His eyes were wide, but his feet got a little bit ahead of him. Trying to cut back. The hole was there, but he slipped and uh, somebody else get a chance. So third and goal from the four now. He'll try it again. Green, though, bottled up. Tackle made by Rusty Johnson for the Eagles. They went right back to him to give him the opportunity, but you poor wasn't having it. They brought pressure off that off their right side and able to get good penetration. Got two guys back there to meet him. Great tackle. And we have another player down on the field. This time it is Jeremy Martin for Bassfield. And that may be another cramp. We've reached that, that late stage of the game where it's starting to set in. You know, but in a game like this, you put it all on the line. There's nothing, nothing left in the tank. There's no need to keep it. This is the state championship. This is your time to go out as a winner. Put it on the line. Give it up for your teammates, especially your seniors. Coach Mancuso going to send the offense back out on the field on this fourth and goal from the 4-5. Applewhite will pass. Tipped. And incomplete. Intended that time for Green, and he almost came up with it, but they say he trapped it. So it'll be another turnover on downs. Here it is. 
roll out. He's looking great. That's the way defensive back just drop into the passing lane. Get your hands up. Deflected. Passville almost came up with another big play, even on a good defensive stop. They did hit the turn. So under five minutes to go, Ypora heads back out onto the field, still looking to try and break up the shutout here. You know, we didn't get a chance to, to talk too much and see all that Derrick Jones can bring, but the numbers that he's put up this season, the size, the speed, we got glimpses of it, and you see why he's a coveted prospect and, and has a bright future uh, headed to Ole Miss. Absolutely. He's the type of player that will fit into Hugh Freeze's uh, scheme fairly well. He may, I mean, the kid is an athlete. He can do it all. You see, once they do get the ball in his hands, he can make things happen. He wants the ball. Unfortunately, his team wasn't able to get, get him the ball much today for him to make anything positive go their way. But he'll play on. And he's one of those guys that will actually get one more high school game. He'll uh, be a part of the Mississippi Alabama High School All-Star Game. He was selected for that, uh, which will take place in a few weeks over in Alabama. And Mississippi going to try and get back on the winning track in that game. As big Lindaria Smith jogs off the field. Hey, you can own your own keepsake from this exciting matchup as well as all the other state championship games from this weekend. All you need to do is go online to M-I-S-S-H-S-A-A-Network.com and you can purchase your DVD. Pittman a little inside give to Drain. You know, we heard some of the Bassfield officials talk about it during the halftime show that this is uh, this is kind of what they expect. You know, they uh, they love their program, but they want them and expect them to be here in this position every year. And, and as a program, that's what you want. You want your kids to come into the program with an expectation of winning and ultimately getting to that state championship. Bassfield's done a great job of, of making that their thing to, to say look, if you come into this program, we expect to win, we expect to be in Jackson come at the end of the season. There's some really good programs they compete with down there. You know, they beat East Marion to get here. East Marion got to the title game a year ago. Taylorsville is always a big time rival down in South Mississippi in the 2A classification. So it is impressive for Bassfield to get here and very impressive what they've done today. After the injury timeout, it'll be third down. Coming up for you, Cora. So the Eagles will roll out Pittman. Pittman in trouble. As he is wrapped up and brought down by McLeod. Fourth and 11, facing you, poor. That looks like uh, Coach Graham is going to go ahead and punt it away here. Just over three minutes to go, winding down here in the Class 2A state championship game, a game that's been dominated by Bassfield from the get-go. They score on the first possession and haven't let up since. I'll let this punt roll dead at the 38. There's a flag, though, in the middle of the field.
So maybe another first down for Bassfield in this possession. We'll salt it away. Face mask. Receiving team. Five-yard penalty. First down. Again, we heard all about the athletes, the speed, and what we heard was correct about this Bassfield team. They, they showed everything uh, in their arsenal this afternoon. They did. They came in and they, they established the tone right away by uh, getting some quick points on the board. And they played relentless defense. Speed is there. It's real. And they are going to let Applewhite finish this game at quarterback. Take over here at the 43. Just a quick handoff as Marshall makes another tackle in the backfield. Once again, Bassfield won it in 2009. They really kind of built their name back in the mid-80s with those titles, 1984, 1985, and 86 as well. And looks like you got a little bit of tribute right here as a new group will come onto the field and the offensive starters will come out to a well-deserved round of applause from the black and yellow faithful. Absolutely. Here are you guys who are the future of the basketball program and the guys who expected to try to be back here next year. Second out play goes for very little. Let's send it down to Kim Tanner on the sidelines. Had a quick second to talk to the principal over at Bassfield, and he was bragging on his guys, saying, you know, they're just a great group of kids. He said, in fact, number 57, James Graves, he's going to the Alabama-Mississippi game, and he's got a really good shot at, the, yes, 57, and he said he's got a great shot at being our valedictorian on top of that. He's got the brains and the brawn. He was a beast out there on defense today, and an impressive young man. Got a chance to talk with him on Monday. Here's another impressive young man. Big run there by Josh Applewhite, the sophomore getting some snaps at quarterback. That was, that was some speed. He just naked bootleg, kind of tuck it, design run all the way. Once he got out in open space, he did, wow. I mean, that's Bassville's future right there. Mm -hmm. Coach Mancuso has to be happy with seeing his young guys get on the field and make great plays in the, in the state championship. And you know what Bassfield is, too? It's the same last names because there's a lot of brothers, there's a lot of cousins, there's a couple of families that really feed that pipeline of great players. And it creates closeness, too, because they are related and they know each other well. That's right. Come up through the Pee Wee program and playing football through junior high together, it creates a chemistry. Now Josh Applewhite will take a knee. We're inside a minute, and the celebration can begin for Bassfield and the Yellow Jacket Faithful. And looks like Coach Graham is going to take a timeout for you, Cora. He may want to get some of his younger guys in on the action and a chance to say that they they got the opportunity to play in a title game. You know, those guys don't have anything to hang their head about. They came in, they, they were playing a great team, great speed, great talent, but look at what they went through to get here. This year is still a success, even though they don't walk away with the, with the state title. You know, 10 straight wins for you, Poor, to get to this point. Dramatic win over Bruce last week in the North State Finals. and. And Coach Graham knew it. When we talked earlier this week, he said, we, we've we got to try and find a way to slow him down. He knew it was a big task. They needed to play a near-perfect game. And, and they just had a, a few too many mistakes. And basketball was really, really good. So 
probably just going to take one more snap to put this away. Applewhite in the victory formation. He'll take the knee. That will do it. Bassfield takes down Euphora 35 to nothing. The Yellow Jackets claim the Class 2A state championship. The Travis Bassfield came in and did exactly what they wanted to do. They established the wrong keys early. See, and they got their other players to step up, and they had big time plays from a, a slew of players. Everybody they need to make big plays stepped up and made big plays, and most of those plays were just so happy to be touchdowns. Coach Ben Cuso, the, the same look on his face that he's had all game. He's, he's not a man of too much emotion, but you know he's got to be feeling pretty good about this. They cap off a perfect season. First time in program history to go 16-0, and and they did it in dominant fashion all year, and they did it in dominant fashion today. Pitching the shutout, 35 to nothing, Bassfield over Euphoria. Coming up in a little bit, our Kim Tanner is going to catch up with Coach Mancuso. And like we said, this is a team that had a lot of great seniors, but that junior class is what everyone keeps talking about. So the future and the chance for them to get back and repeat you probably put them as the favorite, I would think. I think you have to put them as the favorite. But, yeah, they're losing, they're losing a couple key guys. But, as a whole, they bring back the core of what made them <clears throat> Bassville and what made them the best and, and the quickest and maybe one of the most aggressive teams in 2A. So, I think uh, the coaches have a lot to look forward to. Of course, enjoy, enjoy tonight, but you know that they're looking down the road to see how can we get back in this position next year. And our Kim Tanner has tracked down the 2A state championship coach, Lance Mancuso. Coach, I think I saw a t-shirt on your sideline that summed it up. It said, champions aren't born, they're made right here in Bassfield. Yeah, we take a lot of pride in that. You know, these young men, they've... They set out to, uh, you know, achieve a goal, and um, when you're able to finish the task and, and reach the top at this, you know, what can you say? Uh, I'm extremely proud of them, and, you know, they, uh, they're, they're just a special group of young men. Talk to me about the leadership on your team. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, uh, it starts with those guys, you know. They were, they've been here ever since I was. You know, when I came to Bassfield, they were my first group, and, uh, you know, it's special. It is. Well, congratulations, Coach, Thank on you. a great night. Thank you. Travis. Thank you very much, Kim. An emotional Lance Van Cuso, a, a special moment there as he enjoys his second state title with the Yellow Jackets. This one in dominant fashion, 35 to nothing. They win the 2A title. We'll wrap things up here in just a minute. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. On November 22, 1981, the Rolling Stones joined Muddy Waters on stage at a small club in Chicago. Relive this intimate night of blues and rock icons. Don't miss Muddy Waters and the Rolling Stones, live at the Checkerboard Lounge. Thursday at 7 on MPB. E-learning for educators in partnership with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Improved teacher knowledge. 
improved teaching practices, increased student achievement, online professional development for educators, earn CEU credit, fits easily in your schedule from the convenience of your home. Register for courses now at www.mpbonline.org. Inspired teaching, inspiring students. Hey, congratulations to the winner of the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic Text to Win contest, and it goes to the folks from Eupora. They will receive a $1,000 donation from Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. And once again, congrats to those guys. They got the gold medals. The Bassfield Yellow Jackets are the Class 2A state champions here in the state of Mississippi. And we talked about their offense all day it came through the defense just as good and that feels pretty good as well absolutely being a defensive guy coming in to play the best the best two two eight teams in the state of mississippi and pitching a shutout that means a lot those guys have a great reason to hold their heads up high and said look our offense is impressive but our defense we came in and put the goose egg so the gold ball is there's a lot of big plays that led to the victory and we will show you the move of the game. And it was right here. Yes, the inside give. And Trodrick Daniels breaks free for a 71-yard touchdown. That was early in the third quarter. Made it 35 to nothing. That is the move of the game. Daniels, one of three running backs with over 100 yards for Bassfield today. Impressive performance for the boys from South Mississippi to capture the 2A championship. And congrats to you, Pora, as well for a great season. Now, coming up a little bit later this evening at 7 o'clock, the Class 6A title game, heavyweights meet. Coach Peterson and the Brandon Bulldogs at 12-2, meeting Lance Pogue and those South Panola Tigers coming in at 11-2. You can catch all the action right here at 7 p.m. And, uh, Jesse, that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a, a, just a slugfest. I mean, you got two great teams. Brandon, I'm looking for a big crowd. You know South Panola's going to bring a huge crowd. Brandon's local. I think there's going to be a big crowd here. You'll, you'll be able to hear it all around Jackson. Yeah, the first Metro team to make it in a long time for the state championship at the highest classification. You see they got their, their signs up already. Well, for Kim and Jesse and all the folks here helping out with the telecast today, I'm Travis Raycheck. Congrats one more time to the Mississippi Class 2A champions, the Bass Field Yellow Jackets. Have a good one.